Hi everyone, this is Varun here. Today I would like to talk about the pulse width modulation capabilities of the Beagle board. So essentially, pulse width modulation is a way of providing intermediate power supply to a variety of electrical and electronic appliances. So this is actually done by switching the output pins uh, in between uh, to an on and off state rapidly and this gives an appearance of an average in between power state and the ratio of the on time to the total time is dubbed as the duty cycle of the PWM. Next. So here you see a variety of PWM signals that have been generated and at the top we have a 0% duty cycle which is basically an off signal. At the bottom we have a 100% duty cycle which is basically a perpetually on output pin and if we provide a 50% duty cycle we'll actually be having an average voltage output of 2.5 volts and similarly for the other duty cycles. Next. So on the Beagle board the three dedicated pins are provided in order to output a PWM signal and these are provided on the expansion header in the form of general purpose timers 9, 10 and 11 and actually on the OMAP 3 SOC uh, four pins are dedicated to providing PWM signal whereas on a Beagle board only three of these are exploited. So in order to set up a PWM correctly, we have to do a range of steps in order to set it up. So these are basically first you have to multiplex the PWM functionality on the general purpose timers and this is basically in order to ensure that the general purpose timers are corresponding to the PWM functionality among the eight functionalities that are available at our disposal. And nextly we have to load the TLDR register which is basically denoting the frequency of the PWM signal. Then after that we have to load the T-match register which is basically denoting the duty cycle of the PWM signal and finally we also have to load up the control register. So as you can see this is a tedious process. Uh, here you can see the waveform that the PWM, uh, the Beagle board will generate for the PWM. So basically the TLDR register is denoting the frequency of the PWM signal whereas the T match register it denotes how much duty cycle will be implied on the PWM. Next. So in order to set up the PWM we initially just have the slash dev slash mem interface and in order to set up it, set it up we have to directly access the various registers and this approach is uh, not really advisable and not really modular and this kind of a quick and dirty hack but thanks to the Google community and the BeagleBoard community uh, now you can use a dedicated PWM driver uh, this is actually a part of the GSOC project that I am doing and the aim of the GSOC project is to implement or encapsulate the PWM functionality in the form of a driver and then also develop certain applications in order to show the use of the PWM driver. So in order to use this driver you basically just head down to the link on the screen and this and just build this link uh, and build this uh, driver. This will give you a loadable module. You just load this module and you have the slash dev slash PWM interface which you can directly uh, give the duty cycle and frequency to and it will set up the PWM for you. So currently this driver is not able to implement a certain key feature, number of key features this like pre-scaling of the clock uh, this can currently not uh, provide the 13 megahertz clock to the general purpose timer 11 or 10 uh, this clock would provide a better resolution and also you have to take into consideration the fact that the general purpose timer pins are all outputting a 1.8 volt signal. So if you are adapting this signal, if you are trying to use this signal in order to control a particular device, you will have to step it up or rather step it down to whatever your requirements are. So this is a very important point that you have to take into consideration, the voltage conversion of the, conversion of the signal. Um, Another thing that will ha happen as a result of the GSOC project is that the driver will be implemented as a static module in the kernel and hopefully uh, this will also be integrated into the main mainline Linux OMAP tree. 
now a number of key applications can happen if such a PWM driver is available easily to the general public. Uh, this can be used easily for driving a number of motors like DC motors or a servo motor and this can usually be used to control the speed of these motors then this can also be used to control the power that is going out to an LED or an LCD so this can be used for dimming of LCDs or like dimming an LED plus another key application that my GSOC project is trying to implement is that uh, we'll try and output a sound signal from the PWM pins. So basically the sound signal uh, is passed on to the ALSA layer of your uh, Linux which is basically in the form of a PCM signal. So this PCM signal will be converted into a PWM signal and this will be passed through a glue layer from the ALSA into the PWM driver. So this will give you another channel of sound on your Beagle. Uh, plus this driver can or in general the PWM from the Beagle can be used for uh, any application which needs to supply intermediate power. So this is a very key feature which can be used but the fact to consider here is that the Beagle should not be used just for the PWM because it will be overkill. So hope you like what I have said. Thanks.